what's up? Red Panda Anthem. Red Panda, what's good? Red Panda Anthem. Your boy. Let's get into this. So this, I told you this is going to be a crazy episode. 8,500 people want to check in the first 15 minutes. Record. That's what up? Record. What up? What up? That's Dude. a record. That's a record within itself. So shout out to YouTube. Hit the like yep. button. I promise you, this is going to be a gym. Please share. Episode. We're not going to play no games with this. All right. So um stock market let's get into this are we in a bubble are we in a stock market bubble yes I told you guys last year when everybody was chasing options and now they're chasing nfts <clears throat> please put this in chat you do not want to chase it a high i'm going to give you guys the percentages later but when the market is so high that everything is going up and last year please go watch the original episodes with all the slides i talked i said what was the number one indicator that i put that was most important for my day ones that have been here on Market Mondays. And when I say quantitative easing will stop, the market is gonna be different. And here we are. Nothing that moves that at high of a rate lasts forever. And we haven't had a crash technically yet. We're just coming down to the levels on which we are. So we are resetting a little bit. There's nothing to worry about. If you've been investing every month, definitely since 2020, you're good. For those of you, if you're getting beat up right now, this is a great time. And I always say this, Decide one person that you're going to follow. Because if you follow five, it's not going to work. You can only listen to one master and hopefully you listen to the master investor. Um, <laughs> but on top of that, you need laser focus and stop chasing these highs. Turn off the news. Do your own research. I'm here to help you. But are we in a bubble? A small one. But we're just correcting to the levels and we're in the areas where we should be. Yeah. So if any if anybody's not familiar what happened today in the stock market, uh, the Dow Jones at one point was down eleven hundred points. Mm -hmm. um, it was a bloodbath that was happening. Nasdaq was down heavy. Six hundred uh, points. S and P point. was down heavy. Um, but for Netflix was down forty five dollars at one point today. Mm -hmm. um, to, at the end of the day, America. But I thought de all debt was good. People kill me. Write this down. You want to invest in businesses that are not bleeding money because of the debt ratio. The original Ozark is out. I'm gonna probably burn through it in three days. It's not the best model. So you want to make sure that your businesses that, that you are co-owners of don't have a lot of debt on the table. I love the Netflix model, but to go from 799 to then be at 387.15, that's not fun. I'll give you guys a, and I'll say this now, just write it down. At least mark off when things hit an all time high, mark off 50%. You want to put half of your cash there. Netflix mm -hmm. got to 700 and you guys are buying at 648 because some guy on IG told you. Now, when you message him, he will not reply to you, <laughs> let alone give you money. <laughs> but that's so kind of what we said. Money. Yeah, that's what we, we, we spoke about last week when we were just like, yo, finding your buying points, right? And so, like, if you do that, if you just say, like, all right, well, was that 700? Let's see where the 50 point marker is and let's mark it off there and have that number written down. Like, literally, I have these numbers written down. So, while everybody's texting, everybody's panicking. I'm locked in because I'm just like, I'm just waiting for it to hit my number. I don't want it to, mi to miss my number. Like I saw that happen mm -hmm. today with Microsoft. I'm like, oh, wait, I saw the 200, my 200 EMA was 296. I mm -hmm. saw it go down to 296. I said, okay, let me see how far it goes. Got down to 277. I can't wait. I got to do that now. I don't have time to text. I mean, so like I already had these numbers marked in and that's what we're talking mm -hmm. about. Know where you're going to buy in at. And do we load it there? No, we, we're going to taper this in. We're going to put money in. We're going to buy shares. We're going to buy ETFs, right? We don't have to do options right now, right? We can make puts, but we don't have to, right? We can add equity shares right now. So and let me, all let these me, things are possible. Let's just take a brief intermission break. I just want to just give my personal, I have never done this before, but I just sure. want to give my personal, um, like what I actually did today in the last couple of you days. You moving today? Yeah, I made some, I made, I've been making moves. Okay. Um, so how I look at it is this. Hey, before I tell you what I'm personally invested in, I want to just give my philosophy on it. If you study boxing, you know, the number one rule of boxing is to protect yourself at all times. And um, one thing that, you know, Conor McGregor said when he fought um, Floyd Mayweather was at the end of the fight, um, he said that, you know, Floyd wasn't really that strong. You know, Floyd's not a power puncher. He's not really that strong. He said Floyd wasn't really that fast. He's older, so he lost, a lot. He lost some speed. He said, um, but he's composed. Uh -huh. That was, the, I don't think a lot of people really fully appreciated that comment. Composure is more than anything. Composure actually can beat speed, power, all of that. He's, he said he's composed. 
So I say that to say my number two rules of investing is to protect yourself at all times and, and stay composed. And I learned from people that have a lot more money than me. Mark Cuban, um, you know, when he spoke to us and he told us that you have to protect once you have money, you have to protect it. And um, humble when he said uh, you only have to get rich once. Shout out to Humble, yeah. So I'm a, I'm a defensive investor. I've been a bear my whole life. Not just in investing, I'm, I'm just a bear, period. I'm always a pessimist in everything. Um, that's just how, you know, my brain works. So I'm only really have like five stocks on my, on my watch list right now. Apple, XLK, XLY, Microsoft, QQQ, SPY, VTI. I guess that's actually six. Um, so how I looked at it was like Apple, is 182 was their high was 182 they 159 around that time so it's like 12 percent off um i personally think that apple that's i'm not comfortable buying right now for apple i think it could probably get lower in like the 140 ranges so i waited on that xlk um 15 off of his high it's not a it wasn't a bad buying i don't think but I'm already kind of heavily weighted in tech. So I, I didn't jump on that. XLY is interesting. I wanted to up my position at XLY for a long time. XLY, we talked about that. The reason why I like XLY is that it does have tech exposure in it, but it also have it has other companies that's not just, just technology companies. So, um, it has Starbucks, it has Lowe's, it has Home Depot. Oh, and um, so, you know, when I saw it at 18% off um, of its all-time high, I thought that was a good time to actually add some money in. Microsoft, a company that I wanted to oh, um, actually add in my, I wanted to have an add on my position for Microsoft for a long time. I've been waiting. I've been waiting for Microsoft for a very long period of time. When you see a company like Microsoft almost down 20% from its all time high in the 280 range, I think you have to start to put some money in. Now, like choice, you don't necessarily have to load the whole boat, but you know, I definitely yeah, put some money in. It's not something that, you know, if it goes lower, I'm not going to be mad at it. Like, you know, when you look at something almost $60 off of its all time high, a company like Microsoft, it's an opportunity to start adding to your position. So I added to Microsoft. QQQ is, a, is, is another one that, you know, I have a strong position in, um, but I just didn't feel comfortable putting money in QQQ right now because, you know, I already have a lot of tech. I just kind of went over that. SPY and VTI, I've been putting money in those. And mm -hmm. um, that's for diversification standpoint. That's more of a safe bet. You really can't go wrong with that. It's not really a time for me to put money into option contracts right now because I feel how I look at the options is that I have a substantial amount of money in options right now. If things go right, I'll make a lot of money. If things go wrong, I won't, it, it won't like I ain't kill me. Lose no money. It won't kill me. Yeah. But it's not, it, you can't be greedy. You can't be greedy. So if if it if it bottoms out and it goes lower and it gets a position where I feel like, you know, it's a no brainer. If Apple goes to like 140, then, you know, I might look at some long term option calls close to the money, close to the money long term. Once again, me personally, and I can only speak about my personal philosophy and where I'm at in life. Yeah. If I was younger and I needed I needed to make a lot more money on investments, I might take more risk. But I don't necessarily need that right now. And preservation of capital is extremely important for me. So this is my this is my thought process. Like if I can get 60, 70, 100 percent, I'm OK with that. I don't necessarily need to get a thousand percent because you start to look at the risk reward ratio. Sure. Yep. And yep. once you start to understand how money works, if I can turn over, you know, 100 percent. On an ongoing basis, you know, yeah. that, Do it. a, that that's yeah, a lot of money down the line. Yeah. Um, so that's why the options I'm not I didn't, I'm not really rushing into option contracts right now. But like I said, if keep some money on the sidelines, if there's an opportunity that, you know, I just can't miss, then I'm going to go full full fledged with, with a couple. But only I'm only looking at those. And then one other thing before I finish, the reason why I'm only looking at those that I just named is once again, Safety first. Yes. Um, Zoom is down 63%, almost at a 52 week low. Zoom is dead. I, don't touch it. But let me let me just finish. So people might get tempted with that. People might get tempted with Netflix. People might. Yeah, you could always potentially make more money on a more riskier play. But once again, it's the risk reward ratio. Um, I like I I'd rather go with something that I'm not going to lose money on. Like the number one rule to invest in is don't lose. Yep. So everybody's risk. Appetite is different, um, but I'm not in investing to lose money. I'm in investing to actually make money, preserve the money that I've already made. So 
my risk reward ratio in my brain is to say, okay, Zoom could potentially, if it just goes up crazy, I could make a lot of money, but it's also a very high risk situation right now. I would rather go with something that I know is going to, you know, stand it's the test of time. And it's just like sports. When you get down, you go with your star players. Like I played basketball my whole entire life. When you're down by 20, you don't put the seventh man off the bench in the game. They you help put, you recover. Yeah. You put the star players in. Yep. You got to go with your core. When you, when you down, you go with your, you go with your core players that mm-hmm. have been there. That's proven. That's going to get you to the victory. You don't bench Tom Brady <laughs> in overtime. Or, so, or cut Antonio Brown when they need him yesterday. <laughs> when you need a slot receiver. <laughs> so that's 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 my that's my personal playbook. Yeah. That's some of the moves that I, I made today. I feel compelled because I was busy. I, I, I feel I, I I'll share a few then. Let's let's do that. Um, so like you, uh, again, obviously we 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 have uh, some similar investments, but I've ten over the past I say over the past three weeks or so, obviously with the Nasdaq. Um, having a correction, I've decided to go more into having shares. And so I know one of the things I've been saying on Market Monies for the past two years is that mm-hmm. we want to start our own club. We want to make it like the 40-40 of investing. And so I said, let's do a thousand shares and a hundred doors. And so yep. I hope everybody's been still doing that. Um, I got to my thousand shares at Apple. Welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I got it's in the Apple. Clap it up for Troy. Appreciate that. For Troy and shout- chat. Shout out to Chuck. Shout out to Taylor, man. Um, we had a great conversation. He's a young man from our neighborhood and uh, he's really diving in into investment. And we had this whole conversation about Apple when it got up to 183. And I told him, just wait. I, I sent him the text message. I said, it's going to pull back. Let's look at it in that 150 to 155 range, just based on the percentages I was looking at. And it hit 155. And I sent him the text message right on time. And so I grabbed some shares at Apple today that got me to my thousand. Uh, Microsoft, like I said, uh, and it's crazy because we were, uh, Lawrence was on uh, the chat today with, with the earners. And as he's talking about Microsoft, I'm actually purchasing and he, we looked at the same exact thing and uh, we had put in the 200 EMA and we looked at how often does Microsoft trade below its 200 EMA, right? The last time it did it was exactly, you know, <laughs> and so when you look at it, if you look at it, it's 200, uh, but it, it, it's 10,000 people on YouTube. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to everybody on YouTube. Somebody, somebody might not know what the EMA is. What's the EMA? So it's estimated moving average. So over the 200 day span. Exponential. Um, exponential. exponential. So the last time it was March 23rd, 2020. So this is right in the, right during the pandemic, like the height of everything shutting down. Mm-hmm. And so that was the last time it did it. And it finally did it like on Friday. And I was like, all right, well, maybe it still has to move to move down. And it actually did. It got down to 277. Um, and so once it hit 277, I was like, oh, yeah, got to grab some shares. So I grabbed uh, some shares at that number. <laughs> yeah, a few shares. And, and, and look where it closed today, right at its 200, right at 296. So right, it got right back up to his 200 day uh, moving average. So that was a great play. Uh, Facebook, another one that, you know, I already have some option calls on it for out to 2024, like long-term leaves. Uh, but I saw the stock, the equity. I'm like, look, I want it under 300. It got down to 290. No brainer. If I loved it at 300, I have to love it at 290. And so I grabbed some shares there and NVIDIA. Oh my. My baby. NVIDIA. <laughs> I had uh, my price point under 219 and uh to see it go down to 211 again if i loved it at 219 of course i have to love it at 211 so i grabbed some shares there um i actually uh invested in uh was it vti i think i got some vti shares um i added to the custodial account for the kids and so this is what i'm saying when people are very fearful like they looked at the fair and greed index Mm-hmm. Right. That was remember those. That was one of those early episodes. And we were like, yeah. look, look at the fair and greed index. It'll tell you what the market is thinking. The fair and greed index is at 13 right now. Yep. Everybody's fearful. And yep. we told you when people are fearful, that's when we see opportunities. And so these are some of the opportunities that I saw today and decided to act upon. Um, yeah. I'm sure there'll be some tomorrow. But you got to you got to be active. You got to know, like, this is a this is a time. Right. If you love it at one number, you've got to love it at the next one. I want to stress this really quick. Please write this down because this is a scholarship. VOO, VTI, Apple, Microsoft. If you choose to deviate, the losses will be a lot heavier. So I know some of you guys, but VOO, VTI, Apple, Microsoft. And one of the reasons I love Apple, if you go look at the top apps, Zoom, TikTok, Disney+, Plus, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Snap, Messenger, Gmail, Cash App, Amazon, Netflix, Google Maps, DoorDash, they, all, they get a percentage of all those businesses. 
Why are you not invested in them? So you stick with the plan because all the money, going back to the marketing point, consistency. If you keep switching out positions, you're going to end up in a lot of trouble. For those of you looking to do an option, do not do an option on Apple until it gets to 134. Yeah, yeah that's I, what I said. I, it, has to, it has to be something. And one, 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 I, have, one, I guess one more. I have one more. So there was there was one more and I it didn't I had a limit order on it. Uh and that was CrowdStrike. Um because again it had hit it had hit a number that I had like 52 week low. Exactly. So it hit a number that I liked. And so yeah. I I put the limit on, but the, the problem was when I put it in, I think it was like at like 315. By the time the market had started to turn around. <laughs> and so it started trending back up. And I'm like, oh, all right. So that's one that I'll have to look at tomorrow. But that's what it is, man. When when, when these t type of situations where there's a correction, especially in the NASDAQ, even in S&P itself, nope, get your point, get your target point, right? And and stick with it. Well, like, Y'all yeah. did all the work. Y'all waited for it to get to a number and then it got to the number. It's like, wait, should yep. I do it? And and one thing, um, shout out to Jada Kids. one thing that he said early on is um, focus what I'm in, focused on what I'm invested in. And that's something that I always remember that line for my whole entire life. I don't talk about a lot of stocks because I'm not invested in them. I'm not mm -hmm. focused in them. I'm focused on what I'm in, invested in. So I, I never invested in Amazon. That's why I don't really talk about Amazon, but I want to ask you about Amazon. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I never invested in Disney. I never invested in a lot of these companies. That's why I don't talk about it. You don't need a lot of companies to get rich. You just need to focus on a few. Yeah. I focused when I'm, what I'm invested in. One last thing about these options. Once again, everybody's option strategy is different. Just be careful because like, like I said, I never lost money on a long-term close. I never lost money on a long-term in the money option or close to the money option. The, Stop the, gambling. I so, know y'all want to chase 900%. Stop yeah. gambling. You get out of the money, far out of the money, you can hurt yourself. And don't get fooled by social media. They say the average black family's net worth is like $2,500, something like that. So my thing is this. If you're on social media and everybody's a, mar a mar uh, market genius, they make money. All of money a sudden, on, what was make, the post in 2015? They make <laughs> money on puts when the market goes down, short-term options. If everybody's making money, who's poor? If everybody's rich, who's mm -hmm. poor? And here's a, here's a quick test. Ask them how much they have and then literally ask them, hey, send me some money. Shout out to uh, everybody in Stock Club. I was supposed to get cash up too. You guys have been sent cash apps. If you got them, put yes in chat. Ask them to send you some money. That's a real test to know. Everyone's talking. What well, if you want to steal my entire strategy? Go to Ian Dunlap reveals the hidden secrets of investing article I did. I think in 2016 or 17 and rolling out. Take my entire shit. <laughs> Let's see who's really winning. Because man, same thing. Hey, Shadi, I was quiet today. Yo, I didn't see that many <laughs> posts. No talk about hedging. Where was it at? What? Nah, but that's not love though. But that's what not a love though. though. But but it's that it's it's actually no nah, it's actually out of love because I know that's our culture. Even hip hop, you talk about you talk about things before you have it. That's always been part of our culture, like to speak things into existence. I respect that on a certain level, a but sometimes that and lying though. Yeah. yeah, sometimes you gotta tell the truth. Just sometimes yeah. you gotta tell the truth. And um, like I said, if everybody's making money, who's losing money? Who listen? Who, like, my dad's been doing construction probably since 91. If I wanted to, I can call him and take every tip from him and put it on social. I never do it. Because those of you that actually do construction, when I say two by four instead of four by four, you're going to be like, he is a fucking fraud. Stay in your lane. Master your craft. Then all the riches are there. Because what I don't want you to do is what happened with Elizabeth the Theranos and other people who have destroyed their brand. You can jump out there too early. And once a flux of people don't trust you, no matter what business you go in. This day, Red Panda Anthem. Ian, what's up? This day, Red Panda Anthem. Red Panda, what's good? Red Panda Anthem. Your boy. Going up. I know they can't stand it.